guys, welcome back to the book out. I'm JC, and yeah, I did not try to get the glue off my tongue. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to embrace it at this point. But this video, that's going to be so distracting. Oh my goodness. This video is on how to give your characters life. So I'm guessing this is going to be a little short, but there are so many issues that comes with writing and will come. But it's just so difficult to write sometimes, and especially so if you don't have good characters. Like, books can have tons of great plots, but the characters are absolutely trash. And those books are actually less interesting than the books with literally zero plot, absolute fluff, but very in-depth characters. Like, a really hard lesson to learn is that if nobody cares about the character nobody's gonna read the book like even if it has amazing world building amazing plotting they literally don't care especially if it's in first person and in these cases it's just really really different like i can count on one hand how many books i've read where the main character is my favorite character and those books are some of the best books i've ever read like, on my bookshelf, I have the Iron Trial series, Magisterium, Callum, my favorite character, well, Cal, and Percy Jackson, which I really don't know why isn't on this bookshelf. It's literally one of my favorite book series ever. But anyway, finally, into the video. So how to give your characters life and make people actually care about them, whether it's in fanfic or an actual novel that you're trying to publish. So the first step for me is, sorry, I'm looking at my strip. The first step for me is to write the character first. Like a lot of people make the plot before they make the character and that's just a huge mistake, like in my opinion. I've done that before and it worked out fine, I guess. I mean, I was in seventh grade, everything was trash, but it's just so much better. Like the first book, book, that I've actually ever finished, I made the characters first. And I actually, in my Milano, cause I use Milano, I actually have like a board of just like just characters none of these are developed by the way but in the ideal society all of these characters would be characters that I could just develop and I could this is a different kind of concept but I could just pick and choose what series they go in like if you have a bunch of characters and then you just pick a book that they go in because I feel like the characters need to fit wait no I said that wrong I feel like the plot needs to fit the characters rather than the characters fit the plot like if you have a plot find characters that that actually fits in or fits as a part of it rather than making characters only for a plot because what if you change the plot then your character is going to be there for no good reason like it's not going to work. Just make the character first. That's going to be your best bet. So, two, now that you've made your character, get to know them. Ask lots of questions about them. So, for me, this part's really annoying. Like, I don't want to go to a website and look up 200 questions to get to know your character. Like, no, Jane, I don't care about her that bad. But I do care to actually do some things that I do. It makes me get to know them way better than asking a bunch of questions about them. So the first thing I do is like, well, after I do all the basic stuff, like what's their name? Do they have a middle name? What's their height? What's their birthday? What's their family, family situation? After I do all that stuff, um, like the bare minimum, I make a shape for them. Like I don't make the shape, but I find a shape that fits them. Like my character Eden, hers is square. It fits her. And Joey, his is an oval, not a circle, an oval. And I don't remember what Penny's is, but just giving them a shape gives them so much more life. And then I get a car like not character, then I get a color. It doesn't necessarily have to be their favorite color. Especially if they're going to go through a character arc where their person changes and they get to know themselves better and they're not an NPC. 
but a color that represents them. Like, even if their color is, like, red and their favorite color is, like, neon green, if the red fits them better, then use that color. And I like to fill in the shape with that color. Like, so Eden's a yellow square. And Joey's, like, it's like a lavenderish, pinkish oval thing. And I give them, lastly, I give them a little quote for their shape. Like, I don't know what Eden's is, but Joey's is, it's not purple. Wait, wait. No, it is purple. Wait a minute. Sorry, his is, it's not pink. Yeah, yeah, because he's a little boy, and the boys are all like, I don't like pink. Pink is a man, the I'm a man. I'm going to be masculine. So, yeah, but anyway. So, shape, I cannot believe I just missed my finger. Shape, color, quotes, and then put it all together. Oh, and I also give them a font. Like, I find a special font for them that fits them. And then it just gives them so much life, you know? And number three, finally, we've moved on. That was so long. Get an image of them. So at first, I just go on Google and look up, I don't know, Mexican boy. <laughs> but that didn't really work out the best because I want my characters to be hot. No offense. Anyways, I went to Pinterest and then I looked up Mexican boy. And they were nice and all. Like, they were really nice. I like to use those for extra stuff, but my main one, I like to use AI. Yeah, I know. And everyone's like, AI is bad, it's something for real artists, That's you shouldn't do that. And I'm just like, that's right and all. I just, I don't have $20 to spare on an image that nobody else is ever gonna see. So, I like to go to AI and I use Art Breeder. Um, I don't really know how to make this. I'll show y'all in a second. I use Art Breeder and it's really nice because I get to use, like, get, these characters are hot. Like, they're really hot. I mean, you could, if you know how to make the app work, you could get some, like, mediocre and weird looking characters. But I don't know how to do that, so I just use a hot person and I keep moving the little buttons around until they're what I want hot to be. So, like, for example, like, look at this hottie. Yeah, look at him. He used to be a character. Sometimes I just mess around for fun to make stuff, but I'll show y'all a character that I actually have. Like, this lovely lady. She's actually in my profile picture on Google, in my other account. Her name is Maya Salem. And it was so easy to make her, and just making an image of her not really making but getting an image of her made her come to life so much more and so before I get to number four I'd also like to suggest if you have a character I would really suggest like making sure they have an arc because if they stay at the same point the whole series and it's not a comedy what are you doing like, no offense, but isn't the whole point, if it's not comedic, to, to change? Like, So anyway, even if they have a little tiny arc that nobody but you notices, or an analysis, analyzer, analysis person, I don't know, analytical, whatever. Make sure they have a little arc, if you want to, it's all suggestions. So anyways, number four, write something from their perspective. And I don't mean third point of view. I mean, you could, I guess, but I mean first person. It doesn't have to be like, I am currently speaking with my mouth, but it could be like, the words flew out of my mouth and they slipped off the wrinkles of my tongue and they jiggled in the air. But, um, write something from their perspective. I actually haven't done this. I mean, I have, but not for this reason. But writing from their perspective made me realize a lot of things. And yeah, it's really helpful. I know I covered that for like two seconds, but actually do that, like it's really, really impactful. And lastly, you have to, this is number five, um, figure out who they're like. So this is totally optional. A lot of people don't do this, at least Gordon Corman doesn't, and he's people. But my characters are based off of somebody. 
even if it's not like my mom or my friend it's like it's less like my bestie and more like Sirius Black and Wolfstar fanfics like that's literally Penny she's Sirius Black and Wolfstar angst fanfiction that's a person or like the love child of my seventh grade history teacher and Ruby, I don't know, Ruby something. What about that? Or just, it, it could be your dad, or it could be that one kid you met for one day and whatever you imagined he or she would be like. It can be literally any person if you want to do this stuff. It's really helpful for me because then sometimes I find myself wondering, wait, what are they going to do in this situation? I know I do that, but what are they doing? And that's really helpful. So that's my last step. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. And if you listen to my advice that you have a really well fleshed out character by the end of it, or a few. And so I'm going to link these things in the description. Well, it's really just Art Breeder. But I'll link that in the description. And you can make sure to check it out. It's totally free. Well, up to like a you can do it for like 10,000 times and it actually costs money. So don't waste your little monies, but um, yeah, how many monies do I have? But anyway, I'll link Art Breeder in the description and down below. And please make sure to like and sub if you want to. I mean, you could dislike or just scroll away. It doesn't really matter, but I'd really appreciate it. So thank you for watching this video and see you soon. Toodles, I guess. I don't know. Bye.